no more nights clubbing, going to the gym, and gathering in large numbers as the federal government reintroduces COVID restrictions. The measures include a nationwide midnight to 4 a.m. curfew. The presidency admits there was an attempt to boggle the residences of the president's chief of staff and administration officer within reach of the state house. And the state of the nation unsettles many groups and persons around the country. The spokesman of the Northern Elders Forum, Hakim Baba Ahmed, will be here to examine Nigeria and its future. And talking about the state of the nation, a conflict reporter and researcher will be joining us to discuss the pictures of terrorists running a pseudo-government within Nigeria and what it means for the country. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Aneta Felix. Good morning to you. Good morning, and I am Osaogi Ogboa. Bright and early on a Tuesday morning. Looking forward to all the goodness that should come on the, in the next two hours. Lots of interesting discussions this morning, and we hope that you stick around with us and enjoy all of it. Good morning, Aneta. Good morning to you again. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm pretty good. How are you? Hungry, as usual, uh, as always. <laughs> I'm not even sure why, because it only happens when I eat really late at night. But last night I didn't. I still woke up starving this morning. When, so. you're, when you're rich and famous, you have an in-house nah. chef that you can wake up at 5 a.m. and say, I want pounded yam and a goose soup, and it's be ready in 30 minutes. That would be great. Fantastic. <laughs> What's anyway. exactly not great this morning is uh, the news that a burglary attempt, you know, in Asaroka, I was about to say White House, has been confirmed. At first, when we had this news on, on you know, May 9th, Sunday, that there was an attempt to, you know, boggle the houses of the chief of staff for the aides, you know, to the president, Ibrahim Gambari and Abubakar Mekano, um, we thought it was fake news, especially since Bashir Ahmed denied this. You know, we have quotes from him saying that this is definitely yeah. fake news. When this, you know, came out online, he, he basically debunked the information. But uh, we've seen confirmation here from uh, Gaba Shehu, who said the uh, attempt to boggle the houses of Ibrahim Gambari, chief of staff, was a foolish one. And that uh, this, this occurred around 3 a.m. Uh, in the morning, but that it was unsuccessful. Um, we're hearing so many news right now. First of all, uh, Bashir um, Ahmed said it was fake news and never happened. Then Gaba who went on to say it was an unsuccessful attempt. But the reports reaching us confirms that armed robbers or burglars indeed, you know, boggled their houses, totally ransacked those houses, carted away with money and other valuables. So we don't really know what to believe right now when even from the government there's just two sides, you know, to the story. But that's really what we have here and you know with the saying there's no smoke without fire yeah. many nigerians believe definitely that the arm robbers were successful um, no one has been arrested yet you know gaba who confirmed this there's been no arrest as they would usually say the police is on top of the matter investigating the situation but it has raised fears that if the most fortified location in nigeria is not exactly safe what happens to me and you who you know, some people live in houses without even gates or high fences. Yeah. So what then happens to us if, you know, people can actually sit down, put one and two together and successfully launch an attack or a burglary attempt and even go ahead to steal money and valuable items? Well, it, 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 um, so first of all, I, don't, I have no idea what the Asso Villa looks like, um, what the whole of that compound or that space looks like. I've never been there. Um, but I can imagine that it is extremely difficult to get into. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that you have to go through numerous security checks before you get to certain places. You know, maybe there is, you know, a couple of gates before you finally get to the villa. I have no idea. Um, um, but for you to, for a burglar to um, get that close to the Asso Villa or get that close to where the president lives and get that close to the chief of staff and even have the guts to break into any of their houses, that takes it takes a lot of guts, you know, to, to try that. And access. Um, and yeah, 
So, you, you know, there will be, um, obviously, there will be at first denials. It's been the same format with the current administration for a long time. You know, at first there's denial and then, then you know, there's now acceptance, but, you know, a, re, a way to rewrite the story and say, okay, well, we accept, but it wasn't really the way it was described or whatever. Um, but it's still obvious that something did happen. You know, either it was successful or unsuccessful, or it was successful and just a little was taken or a lot was taken. Something did happen. Um, and then it makes you also question, and that's one of the things that you brought up, you know, who then is safe if there's people who can take, you know, those steps, who are bold enough to take those type of steps? And what type of security really exists in Aso Villa? Um, shouldn't there be cameras? Shouldn't there be an alarm system? Shouldn't there be some things that should make that place extremely safe uh, for the chief of staff to the president? If anyone can get into that residence, um, it, it shows that they have some level of access that can lead from the chief of staff to the president himself. Um, so it, I'm just really, really wondering what type of security or level of security really exists in that residence, you know, and um, what next? You know, will mm. those people be caught? Are they people, are they staff of the administration? Are they staff of the security network in the administration? Are they, you know, maybe cleaners, drivers, um, you know, people? I, I really have no idea mm. because I don't think anybody would be in that premises or around Aso Villa for any reason if you don't have direct business with the presidency or with the presidency's aides. No random person just walks in there definitely, to sell Kulikuli. Definitely. Access, access definitely was a key factor in this, you know, attack, so to speak, or yeah. burglary attempts. You you, know. You're, you're um, not going to find any random guy or girl just definitely. in that place, you know, walking around selling recharge cards or, <laughs> or anything. You know, you're, every single person who crosses that this gate, is Nigeria. You who don't gets know what's that you close don't know what's to... Yeah, yeah, I get that, Maybe you know, Hawkins but every workshops. single person, I believe, who crosses that gate, I'm sure it's even difficult for press to get into that, you know, that place. So any single person who gets there must have had some level of security clearance. They didn't jump the fence, you know, they didn't come from underground. And so if they have the guts and they have that level of access to get that close to the presidency, they say, oh, it lives in you know, the houses on the next street to Aso Villa. I have no idea what that place really is like. I'm guessing it's some large expanse of land and then there's different estates, different streets, different buildings. But if you can get that close, um, it doesn't tell a good story. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time in Nigeria's history. I've never heard of this um, ever. See, I think what's even shocking for me is the fact that, according to the news we saw from the People's Gazette, that the chief of staff had to run away, yeah. had to abandon his residence. Chief of staff. Well, well snakes, um, rats, there have been different reasons why the you know people have abandoned that place. The president, some, uh, some time, couldn't stay um, or couldn't work from the villa because it was, was it rats or snakes. I'm not sure what it was. Now. There was some, some time. Do you know that, how many Nigerians live with rats? Well, yeah, that's, don't that's pay where we rent. Are. You know, I'm, I'm just saying it's really embarrassing because it's the first time that that kind of thing has ever happened in Nigeria's history. And um, if those people are in court, and if there's no official statement to say these are the persons, they have been caught, this is who they were, then it's, 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 it's not a good look, you know, for the presidency. It's not a good look for the security of, the country, of, yes. of uh, Aso Villa itself. Nigeria's security is a different story. It's not a good look for the security of the Aso Villa itself and how much access people have, random persons that don't have a clean record that could you know, commit crimes. Imagine there was somebody in the house. Imagine chief of staff was in the house and those bur burglars, you know, in their bid to not get caught, harmed him. Just imagine. It could have gotten a whole lot worse. So anyway. Anyway, moving on to um, plan B, right? Yes, absolutely. Pastor Paul Adifarasin, um, over the last, I think it was over the weekend, um, on Sunday service, um, you know, made some statements with regards to Nigerians making a plan B. And according to him, yes, you might have faith, but he also has faith and uh, he also at the same time has a plan B. And he's referring really to Nigerians having another option um, as, aside Nigeria, having some other place that they might seek refuge if the country gets too insecure for them. And in a strict parlance, Jakba. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, yeah, and, and you know, some people have criticized it and said, oh, you know, oh, it's only for the rich. You know, if, if, if only rich people that can have this type of options and stuff like that. But um, I think it's, it's really just painting a picture. For me, it's painting a picture of what the mindset is like for millions of Nigerians. Those who are seeking refuge outside Nigeria because of, you know, better career options, looking for greener pastures. Those who already have that fear that at some point this... Security issues might get too hot to handle 
And in order for them to save their lives and the lives of their family members, they need to go somewhere else. They need to have an option, maybe dual citizenship, maybe enough money to book a flight to Ghana or to some other country, maybe, you know, a bunker on the ground, maybe also run to the village. Um, but it's the mindset that a lot of Nigerians have had. And more um, often than not these days and in the recent times, it's not in search of greener pastures. It is to save their lives. Um, seeing what has happened in the last, you know, long while, last couple of months and years. Really, and um, we, yes, we do have uh, footage of, you know, Pastor Paul Adifarasi, you know, so let's, let's listen to him in his own words. Guys, I bring you greetings from Pastor Ifai, who's busy taking care of the frontier of our world and preparing our escape routes. <laughs> If you don't have a plan B, I know you have faith, but I have faith too, but I have a plan B. And with technology, I can speak to you from anywhere in the world. Get yourself a plan B, whether that's on Okada to Cameroon, or a flying boat or speedboat as we call them, to Seme border or, you know, a hole in the ground, a bunker. Uh, get a plan B, because these people are crazy. They're nutters, the whole bunch of them. <clears throat> and, and wait and watch the signs, because it, it can happen like this. Pastor Paul Adifarasi there, you know, telling his congregation to get a plan B, even though you might argue maybe he was just kidding, he was just joking, he didn't mean it that way. But the reality is that lots of people are traveling out of the country. I overheard a conversation um, just yesterday or so over the weekend about how someone was telling, you know, other people around that, you know, he, he got a call from his friend's mom who told him that, oh, my, my daughter has traveled abroad and he was very happy. When he asked about the country, he found out that it was Libya and she had gone by road. So lots of people are braving the journey to go by foot. Yeah. Illegal migration. Lots of people never make it alive. We hear reports all the time from, you know, IOM, International Organization for Migration, how many people, you know, die at sea, how many people die in the desert, you know, just how many people's, you know, boats and dinghies capsize. Not many people make it alive. So even for people who don't have the money, you know, they still brave it. And funny enough, let's, let's even look at the other side and really look at this objectively. When people say they do not even have the money, you want to travel abroad, you don't have the money to go legally, go and find out how much, you know, these traffickers charge for you to cross um, via road. As much as 800,000 naira. If you yes, can gather as much as 800,000 naira, I really don't want to jump into conclusions as to say, okay, whether you can go and start a business or you can just, you know, keep saving to go legally. But I just feel that that money really, it's, it's quite a sum. For you to say you want to now take well, 800,000 naira, which is a lot in this economy, to now sacrifice your life because there's no guarantee that you'll make it to the other end, you know, to Europe safe and sound and get a career. Some people get over there, they become slaves, they become house help, the organs are vested. Some well, of them it, it, do end up being successful, but yeah. illegal migration never is the route. A lot of those uh, funds, like you mentioned, 800,000, it's not necessarily from anyone's savings. A lot of them are from family contributions, donations, you know, people... They, they yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying is if you can actually money. pull those funds together. Yeah, but the thing is, th there's a difference between um, migrating for greener pastures, looking to go to Europe to see if you can have a better life, than, you know, the angle Pastor Paul Adifarasin is coming from. You know, he's talking now not because of greener pastures, but because you need to have another option of a place you can run to if Nigeria, you know, continues the way that it's going and if things get totally it, worse. I, it's um, fine for me because would you say this is a greener pasture? It's, it's, it's not it's, necessarily, it's you know, for you, but for me, you know, there's a totally, you know, it's a totally different thing. Um, the reason people are leaving or the reason most Nigerians are having this plan B now it's not because of greener pastures. It's because there's that fear that the security situation might get totally worse. You, you can't travel by road right now without, you know, having your heart in your mouth all the way. You know, and I've ever heard about kidnappings in, in Lagos. I've, I saw that there's a message that was going around that people just get pulled into vehicles and, you know... When they're they have, jogging. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, and you pay, you know, quick ransom of 500,000, so 1 million and all of that. That's how bad it's gotten. So there's people who already have that fear that it might get worse, you know, and I don't want to, you know, paint a picture of a, of a war breaking out, all of that. But if you look at what's going on across the country, there's 
what's going on in the southeast you know but we had that conversation yesterday why are police um, facilities being attacked why security agencies have been attacked there is some something that is playing now there's there's lots of signs that show that there might be a bigger security challenge in a, in a in a while you know and nobody wants to be here to witness that um, unfortunately, you can't live with all your family, but those who can afford to, they will live with all their families. There's a lot of people who are currently looking or seeking and paying money for dual citizenship, wherever yes. it is in the world, just so they're sure that if it gets to that point, they can leave. And so that's what he's referring to. Those who would go to Libya or go to Spain, there's, there's always going to be that. There's always going to be those people. Um, but that's a totally different idea um, from uh, what he's uh, talking about. Do you feel safe in Nigeria? Does anybody currently have 100% assurance that they are safe? They, their family members, their wives, their children, and they don't need a plan B. I don't think there's anybody like that. Even well, supporters of the I, APC. I, I, I still beg to differ because security and welfare are intertwined in my opinion, and even in the Constitution, security yeah. I'm, and I'm, I'm just referring really to what Pastor Paul is, is speaking about. I, and from what I understand, he's not speaking about those, you know, running away Definitely. because of welfare. Definitely. Um, but it, anyway. it's, it's, a, it's a plan B conversation anyway. Yeah. Let's know your thoughts on this. Uh, reach out to us on the last social media platforms. It's at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, so, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All right, we'll take a break here and uh, we'll return with Off the Press. Do stay with us.